Welcome back. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Uh, this is part three. What I'm doing is I'm reading from my book, not the entire book. I'm reading from certain chapters and, and passages. Uh, my book is Take Control of Your Life. It's published by HarperCollins Canada. Originally, the title was Hostage to Myself. And what I want to do is I want to share some ideas on how you can beat self-sabotage. A lot of people are thinking, well, what the hell is self-sabotage? And, and why should I care? Well, when we take a look at the word, well, two words, right? Self and sabotage. If you take a look at the word sabotage, sabotage means... Its definition is to deliberately damage, destroy, or obstruct something. When we hear the word sabotage in the news, we're thinking some place got blown up or some place got damaged, and it was a deliberate act. It was either a political movement of some sort, but it was meant to cause damage, obstruct something, or just plain stop it in its tracks. Now, that's the word sabotage. When you put self in front of sabotage, you have the word self-sabotage, hyphenated. That means that you are damaging, destroying, or obstructing something in yourself. Now, you may be wondering, well, I don't want to do that, and that would be a good thing. It is something that we do as a result of many different circumstances or things that may have happened to us in the past. Sometimes we have these narratives in our mind, these self-sabotaging narratives. Remember, sabotage is to damage, destroy, or obstruct something. So if we have a narrative that says something like, well, guess what? You're never going to amount to anything, so don't even try. That may be a voice coming from your past. It may have been someone in your past telling you that. It may be a parent or a teacher someone who puts you down in the past and that little voice is coming back up. You really haven't beaten that voice down. You haven't changed the filter, the water. Earlier in one of the episodes, I, I asked you to imagine yourself as this pitcher, this empty pitcher, because that's how we are born, empty and meaningless. There's nothing that has come into us yet that defines us or that molds us and shapes us. So if you have this empty empty pitcher and you have clear water in it because you're just full of life and it's a new experience, you're a little bit frightened, this is brand new. And then you hear something, it may be a loving sound, it may be you may feel something, an embrace, and, and those are good things going into the pitcher, right? But if bad shit goes into the picture, like anger or someone telling you, you're never going to amount to anything, guess what? You're a loser, you'll never do it. Don't even try. When those voices, when they, when they hit us, they hit us hard. And if we don't dispute those narratives, if we don't change the way in which we believe in ourselves, then that can come back to haunt us in the form of self-sabotage because our conscious mind can only think of one thing at a time one thought at a time we can't have two things going on at once we can't think two thoughts at once if i asked you to think of a pink elephant well you're going to think of a pink elephant you can't think of a blue elephant at the very same instant you're going to think of that pink elephant it's like those voices if those voices that sound just like you jump in and say Guess what, Paul? You're never going to amount to anything, so don't you even try. Well, that's the that's my dominant that's my dominant voice. That's my dominant thought. And when my conscious dominant thought happens, it sends a message to my unconscious mind. So imagine this: your mind, your conscious mind, is like the captain of a ship. We've all watched those movies, right, where the captain says to the crew, "Well, let's veer left," or whatever they say. Har. But when they give an order to the crew, when the captain of a plane or the captain of a ship gives the order to the crew, the crew obeys. So think of your conscious mind as being the captain of your ship. The unconscious mind is what? It's the crew. So when the crew hears the command of the captain, in this case, Paul, you'll never amount to anything. Don't you even try that, then the unconscious mind says, hey, 
Captain says we can't do it. Okay, we can't do it. Guess what? Let's just shut down. Let's not even try. So that's how the unconscious mind communicates, uh, sorry, receives the message from the conscious mind. So we're going to help you to get rid of that dominant thoughts or those dominant narratives that are negative and replace them with positive narratives followed by the action that it takes. You can create new neural pathways in your mind. You can replace the negative self-sabotaging voices, those narratives, with positive narratives. But that's not enough. Once you do that, you have to believe it and you have to exercise it. You have to take the action that you have now associated the new narrative to. So I'm gonna go to chapter one of the book. And again, this is Take Control of Your Life by J. Paul Nadeau. And the first chapter is one entitled Hostage. There are several definitions for the word hostage, but the simple one is this. A person whose freedom and movements are being directly or indirectly controlled by someone else under the threat of physical harm and or imminent danger. This book, however, extends the definition to include the notion of taking yourself hostage. The hostage taker differs in these two definitions. The first is an outside taker. The second is within yourself. So this chapter demonstrates the difference between being hostaged by external forces and being hostage by your internal self. Someone taken hostage by another or others has no choice in the matter, whereas someone who hostages himself or herself may choose not to be a hostage. Thus, there's a simple difference. In the latter situation, you choose. It's that straightforward. And I want to stress that. It's that straightforward. If you tell yourself you can't, guess what? You can't. If you tell yourself you can't ask that person out for a date, you can't ask for that job, you can't negotiate a deal, you can't whatever. If you tell yourself that, you're absolutely right. Because that unconscious mind is going to do everything in its power to make it so. So let's not give that conscious mind that narrative. Let's switch it. Let's police our thoughts. And it's that easy. If you are taken hostage by a negative narrative, become aware of it. What am I thinking of? How am I feeling right now? Jeez, I'm feeling, what am I thinking? Oh God, I'm thinking I'm frightened, I'm afraid. God, I gotta go out tonight. What if I goof up? What if something goes wrong? What, no, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's where the narrative needs to change. Here's where you gotta tell yourself, hold on, Paul, hold on, hold on. You're going out tonight. It's gonna be a great opportunity. You're gonna go out there and you're gonna be your best self. Chin up, shoulders back. You've got this. Yes, you've got this. And start just repeating these new narratives, these new mantras. I've got this. I'm amazing. Use the I am statements. I am amazing. I am worthy. I am lovable. I am this. I am that. Because the moment you start to do that, you unhostage yourself. You release yourself from that cage of doubt and self-sabotage that you allowed yourself to be put in. It may have been the words of other people, the actions of other people in the past, but guess what? That is in the past. What matters now is this present moment and what you tell yourself and what you do as a result of what you tell yourself. Until next time, I'm Paul Nadeau, and go on out there and just be your amazing self.